Ready? Hey, good morning, everybody. How you doing? Good. Are you ready for prayer and worship uh, Sunday? Right? So my name is James Thomason. I'm the lead pastor here at Meeting House Church. And uh, the first Sunday of every month, we do what we call prayer and worship Sunday. And uh, we're, we're going to celebrate the Lord's Supper at the end. But between now and the end, guess what we're going to do? We're going to pray and we're going to worship. <laughs> okay? All right? And, and uh, I'll say a little bit more about that. I just want to prime us a little bit. But before I get there, um, there's a lot happening in our church. We're finally revving back up uh, from COVID. So a couple of things. If you have kids... In youth group, um, two things. Parents' night is coming up on October 13th, okay? They start at 6.30. Uh, that's over in the other building, our gym office building, which is the gray building with black shutters uh, out, the back of the, uh, out the front of the church. Then there's also a Halloween party uh, for uh, our student ministry on Saturday, October 30th, okay? So you need to remember those things. Um, obviously, our ADA ramp is under construction, okay? We're rebuilding that, so uh, I apologize, but uh, we're, we're trying to get that back into shape. It's going to be back into shape uh, soon. Um, just stick with me. I got a lot of announcements. We started our men's group last Wednesday night at 630. That's downstairs every Wednesday night. We had a great time learning about what courage looks like today in our society at, uh, for men, okay? So I, it was a great time. We had a great group. Let me invite you to come on out. You, you, can, you can still join. 6.30 to 8 every Wednesday night. Let me see if I've got everything. Uh, ADA ramp. Um, oh, my goodness, can't forget that. And this is all on this connection lunch. If you are new to Meeting House Church, and you want to meet uh, the, the staff and pastors, you want to find out a little bit more about the church, our Connection Lunch on October 17th is the place to do it. That will be immediately after the service, downstairs in Kids Central, lunch is provided, okay? We just need you to RSVP, office at meetinghousechurch.com, so we order enough food, right? When the food runs out, the fun runs out, okay? Now... Last thing before I prime the pump here. Did everyone get an index card when they came in? Okay. It, uh, if you don't have one, uh, you could raise your hand, let one of our ushers know, or you can make your way to the back, and one of our greeters will give you one. Now, what this is for is for a prayer request. Whatever you are praying about in your life, whatever the big thing uh, that you need, you, you know what that is. Uh, what we're going to do is ask you to write that on this. You don't have to put your name or anything. And if you don't want to write it, if you want to write something small, like you got, you know, some bunions that need to be taken care of, that's fine too. But I would, uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to take these up during the first set of music, okay? Then we're going to redistribute them, and you will, everybody will receive a card, and you pray for what's on the card that you receive, okay? All right? Now, let, let me uh, prime us here a little bit. So this is just, we're going to celebrate the Lord's Supper at the end of the service today. And uh, man, I just, I, I, there's so much I want to say, so much. Um, let me just explain why we're doing this. Um, is we went through the book of Acts, we took about a year to do it. And what we discovered is the biblical church prayed together as a congregation. Congregational prayer was a regular and important part of the life of the biblical church, okay? And so we realize that, and we are going to be, we are seeking, we are growing to be a Book of Acts church here at Meeting House. And so we instituted this prayer and worship Sunday in response to that, because you know what? You go to churches, good churches all around, but no churches pray together. There's just, the church just doesn't pray together. And that's why we're doing this. We are, our goal is to pattern Meeting House Church after the church in Acts. Okay, so we're praying. And now, let me read a little bit to you just some incredibly, incredibly 
powerful verses uh, from the book of Hebrews to set uh, the tone for us today. And I need to put my glasses on because I do not have a large print Bible and I'm getting old. Okay? I'm going to read a few. So just listen. Hebrews, beginning in chapter 9, verse 11. When Christ came as the high priest of the good things that are already here, he went through the greater and more perfect tabernacle that is not man-made. That is to say, not part of this creation. He did not enter by means of the blood of goats and calves. When Jesus returned to heaven after he died and rose again, he didn't offer sacrifices of bulls and calves like, like the Levitical priests did in the Old Testament. He had a better sacrifice to offer. But he entered the most holy place, God's presence, once for all by his own blood, having obtained eternal redemption. Verse 24. For Christ did not enter a man-made sanctuary that was only a copy of the true one. He entered heaven itself, now to appear for us in God's presence. Nor did he enter heaven to offer himself again and again, the way the high priest enters the most holy place year after year with blood that is not his own. Then Christ would have had to suffer many times since the creation of the world. But now he has appeared once for all at the end of the ages to do away with sin by the sacrifice of himself. Chapter 10, verse 10. By God's will, we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus once for all. Day after day, every priest stands and performs his religious duties. Again and again, he offers the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But when this priest had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. Since that time, he waits for his enemies to be made a footstool for his feet. Because by one sacrifice, he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way open to us through his body. And since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near right now, right now today during this service, let us draw near to God with sincere hearts, in full assurance of faith. Because we've had our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience. And we've had our bodies washed with pure water. So today, we as a church enter God's most holy place to be with Him, to speak with Him, to have fellowship with the one true and living God. Okay, that's what Prayer and Worship Sunday is all about. All right? Well, church, let's spend a few minutes singing and lifting our voices to the Lord this morning. Let's stand together. i 
worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, he holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet. take a minute and lead us in a time of thankfulness, thanking God, and uh, just a time of gratitude, expressing our gratitude to Him. And so um, it's hard to do sometimes, you know, we all have junk going on in our life, and sometimes it's hard to, to be thankful for, uh, for what, what's going on, you know, um, or even maybe there's not that much stuff going on, but it's just, you know, it's morning and you had to uh, roll out of bed and, and drag yourself or your family to church and you know, the line at Duncan was really long, right? And, or maybe you're stressed because you bet on the Patriots and they're probably gonna lose, you know, right? But no, seriously, some of us, some of you guys have really heavy, serious things going on in your life. Some of you guys, life is pretty good. And I think that both of those uh, circumstances, uh, we can fall into the trap of losing our focus on God and our thankfulness for what he's done for us. So um, I want us to kind of shift our attitude because uh, when we, uh, when, when we express our gratitude and thankfulness to God, that behavior can change our emotions and our attitude, and it changes uh, our walk with Jesus and our obedience to him. And sometimes we need to just grab our emotions by the hand and lead them with our behavior. So that's what we're going to do. And I want to read uh, James chapter 1, verses 17 and 18, which should be on the screen. You can look at it. says, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth 
through the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. So there's three things in that passage that I want us to thank God for. The first one, it says, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights. And so every good thing in your life and my life is a gift from God. Uh, every, every pleasant thing, every moment of joy, all of that is from God. And listen, that's not to say that God wants you to ignore the bad stuff or shove it under the rug. Um, a lot of people think that, you know, Christianity and following Jesus is about pretending to be happy and uh, just pretending that nothing's ever wrong and that, you know, God is, you know, we're just blindly pretending to be happy. Um, but that's not right. So uh, we need to focus on God even through the hard times. Uh, King David in the Old Testament, who was the most godly man in the Old Testament, uh, wrote about his depression and wrote about his struggles and his fear, uh, wrote about being in mortal danger. Uh, but he also said, but I will remember the good things that you have done, and I will remember the joy that you've given to me, right? I'll remember the time that there was no hope and you gave me hope. I remember the time that my worst fears came true, but God walked with me through it, and he was faithful to me, and even used some of it for good. And so that's what I want us to thank God for this morning. Just anything in your life that is good, thank him for. And then it says, uh, who does not change like shifting shadows. Uh, God's always been the same. He is consistent. He's the most consistent thing in our universe, right? And so if God had the attitude and demeanor and the mood swings like you or I have, we'd be in a pretty bad spot. So I want us to thank God for just being God and being the same and not uh, giving in to uh, you know, those human emotions that, that we fall prey to. And then it says, he chose to give us birth through the word of truth. And that means uh, being born again, salvation in Jesus Christ. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth. Uh, he didn't have to. God, the Lord of the cosmos, the creator of everything, he has no obligation to you and me to save us from our sin. But he did not want to leave you and I kind of wallowing in our sin and the consequences of that. And so... Uh, man, that's just a heavy truth, right? And so let's praise him for that. So take a minute um, and just express your thanks and gratitude to him today. If you're with family or friend and want to pray together and thank him together, we'll just take a quick minute to do that. Kind of, sh again, shift our hearts, shift our attitudes towards that um, uh, attitude of just gratefulness and thankfulness.
We're just going to have a time that's, uh, that's quiet. It's okay. It's okay, right? We're good. Uh, we're going to provide a time right now. We're, we're, we're just going to be quiet, okay? Um, what I'm asking, what I think God is asking all of us to do is to focus our minds and our hearts on him. Okay, we praise God. We know who he is. We know what God is capable of. Um, he is a miracle worker. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And, and so whatever you, uh, just, just quiet your mind, open your mind and heart to God, uh, and pray. Talk to him. Um, and as I want to remind you, in the book of Acts, it says they lifted up their voices together in prayer to God. Okay? You don't read a silent prayer in the Bible except for one, Hannah's. 
Um, and, and so don't be afraid. Don't, be, don't, don't worry about anybody else around you. Just so you know how I approach this, okay, I just, wanted, I just want to, to give you some freedom, okay, to, to be with God right here together. Uh, those, those three songs, I spent most of those songs on my knees praying. And, and so, you know, I know there's kind of like, well, James is the pastor. He can do stuff like that. And, and, but like that, I, we need to get that stuff out of our minds, right? If you need to turn around and kneel, then you kneel. If you need to stand up, you whatever, whatever God is calling you to do, okay? Um, open your mind and heart. You know what's going on in your life, all right? And, and, I, and while you're doing that, I want to ask you to pray. Bring up that next slide. Uh, I, I just want to just ask everybody to pray this in addition to whatever, okay? In addition to whatever, this is what we've been talking about, the potential of the church, Okay? And, and we need to know these things. Folks, I'm, I'm like, God's leading me to the conclusion, like, Meeting House Church, okay? The American church is so lukewarm. We are such, we are so deep in ruts of mediocrity. We do not even realize our own sinfulness, our own passivity, our own just lack of love for God himself. Um, I'm, I'm telling you, I think we are in a, in a crisis in the American church. I think God, I think in Beating House Church, we're in a crisis. Like we'll know when the crisis is coming to an end when we start loving God in a way we've never loved him before. When we start doing things for God that we've never done before because of the Holy Spirit at work within us. I'm telling you, I think we are in like a, 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 a tragic situation. We have, in the book of Malachi, I challenge you to read the book of Malachi. And, and I, I'm, I don't, like, I'm just trying to, God loves us, right? God is compassionate and gracious. God longs to pour out his spirit, his grace, and his mercy on his people to revive them, okay? That's us, okay? But in the book of Malachi, God says something that's really scary, and I think that God has left many churches. I think he says, oh, how I wish that one of you would just shut the doors of the temple and stop offering these sacrifices. Because they're just, they're just going through the motions. They're seeking personal peace. They're seeking personal prosperity. They're, they're caught up with all that the world, all that's going on in the world, and God is an afterthought. And they're just showing up at church. There's, there, there, there's no love, no passion for God himself. And I'm telling you, that's where we're at in the church. Uh, we're all about God's love for us, but we're not about God. We worship every Sunday, churches gather, and what they worship is God's love for them. They don't worship God. We don't worship God. We don't. We worship God's love for us, his blessing for us. We ask, we want, we beg. We want everything but God, I mean from God, but God himself. And I'm telling you, we need, I'm longing for the day. when the, I pray for it every day. When the Holy Spirit, when, when Jesus pours out his spirit on us, this church, and there is revival. And I mean like people are, 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 just, are just brought to their knees. Us, in repentance, in acknowledgement that we've been living in just dead ruts for years. And, and that's where we're at. I, I mean it, folks. The potential of the church is too great for us to be like where, where we're at. So that, that's what's on my heart. It's on my heart for me. I'm, I'm not pointing the finger at you. I'm, I'm, I'm saying I need it, and, and we need it. So whatever God has put on your heart, man, you go to him. Okay, it's time to stop holding back from God, right? You go to him. You confess whatever you need to confess. You ask for whatever you need to ask for, okay? All right, God's here. He's listening. He's with us. He's in the hearts and minds of every one of us who know him. All right, let's pray. I'll just get us rolling, and you pray with whoever. Father God, we, we just we bow before you, Lord. You are the king, eternal, immortal the only wise God. You sacrificed your son. We read about it. You sent him to earth to be our representative. 
God, if you had not saved us, we would still be bound for hell, eternity, without you. But because we are, we are by our natural nature, God, sinful rebels against you. Um, and you, by your natural nature, are gracious and compassionate, slow to anger. God, you abound in loving kindness. God, glorify yourself to us. Your church needs to see your glory. God, we need to see your greatness. For too long, you have been silent because we have not been paying attention, God. I ask you to bring revival and repentance. Show us your greatness and your goodness, Lord, as we seek you.
praying, but if, if keep praying, don't, don't, never mind me, just keep praying. But if God is, I want to give you the opportunity, if God has put a prayer for the church, a prayer for the church on your mind and heart, I want to give you the opportunity to come up here and pray it, okay? To pray for the church, if God has put that on your heart. Keep going, don't, don't be quiet, just keep, we, we lift our voices together to God in prayer. Just keep going, he has many ears, he can hear everything. you would like the church keep praying keep praying don't stop if you would like if you have something that you would like the church us to pray for you about i know it takes some courage up here it's fine we all love you if, if you want if you want us to pray with you about something come on up here and, and we will we'll all pray for you Hi, everybody. Hi. We're going to pray as a church for the Holy Spirit to convict us of our sin and for repentance. I, I keep getting that, that we need to pray for the Holy Spirit to convict every one of us of our sins for repentance, for the Holy Spirit to be able to come down to us. There are a lot of things that we think are normal, a lot of things that we think are okay, but they are not. And today we're going to pray for that, for the Holy Spirit. Keep uh, praying, keep praying if you want to, or, or join in. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you today as a church. We love you. We're here, Lord, because we love you. We want more of you. We are yearning more of you, Lord. We know that we can get more of you if we ask more of you so that we stay still and know that you are God. And because of that, we're here staying still, knowing that you are God. Amen. Knowing that you love us, you protect us. And Lord, we ask that the Holy Spirit convicts us as a church of repentance. We need to repent, Lord. You have said that we need to repent of the things that we have done. We are, there are many, and we do not know them, Lord, because we have been coming to church for years. We have become accustomed to coming to church. And we don't know, Lord, what sin that you want us to repent. Father, we ask that you send your Holy Spirit, you send your Holy Spirit here down to us to convict us of those things that you want us to repent. Father, as a church, we come in repentance right now, Lord. Forgive us our sins, Lord. Forgive us for the sins that are blocking you from coming down to us, Lord. 
forgive our the sins of us in an individual as families even generations from things that we have done that we do not know lord as a church forgive us forgive us as a country as a town lord even as in individual towns wherever you are lord forgive us oh lord and forgive especially the generation of sins that we have done lord that are not pleasing to you father forgive us and con send your holy spirit lord to convict us of those things we pray that you have you have heard we believe that you have heard because lord you have said that ask and you for whatever we want and lord you will give you will answer those prayers it is good to know that it, it doesn't have to take days it can be instant and it can we ask that you send the holy spirit and convict us instantly lord we pray this trusting and believing in jesus name amen, amen. we have to realize is that any ministry that gets done is done by God okay that's what we have to Jesus said when I be lifted up speaking of himself I will draw all people to myself he also said they will all be taught by God and so when we when we uh, you know I can get up here and preach God's Word okay but I'm not doing any ministry. I, I, I'm, I'm in, in a real sense, I'm just speaking the words of God. We can sing God's truth. We can praise him. I, we can counsel and give wise counsel to people. But unless God the Holy Spirit does his work on people, then no ministry gets done. The only reason that you are a believer in Jesus Christ is because one day God did ministry on you. He, God himself, woke you up. Okay? He woke you up from the dead and gave you life. And any growth that you've, anything you've learned from God's word that's been incorporated into your life and you've overcome sin or fear or doubt or rebellion, that is the work of God in you, right? Jesus said in John chapter uh, 16, now maybe the end of 15, he said, listen, when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will testify about me. And you also must testify. And so what we need is the ministry of God on us. Okay, we need God and that's what we're here for. Okay, that's what we're asking God to do. That's why we're, we're doing this. We're asking James is not going to get up here and minister and talk. The band's not going to get up here and minister and talk. We're asking God to minister. Okay, we're, we're asking you to get alone with God right now, and, and you be with him. All right, come on up, pray the limit. What would you like uh, us to pray for, or is there something that you would like us to pray yeah, for? I'd love to pray for okay. Um, dear God, Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, I pray that our whole church, that we organize fasting together, and that we all um, fast and pr organize fast prayer and meditation together to you, dear God and Jesus Christ. And I also, um, I pray for myself for healing for an eating disorder. And I pray for Rolf and Cindy Larson. I pray that Rolf and I pray that Cindy may walk again and Matilda Valvazi. I'd love to get yeah, yeah, let's keep, oh, okay. it, let's keep yeah. it for us. Okay, and and yeah. do you want us to pray with you about your disorder, your eating yeah. disorder? Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. Anything else you want to pray for the, for the church? And I, I pray for healing and protection for the church. And I pray, Jesus Christ, that you encircle us all and your angels and that you surround us all and wrap us in all of your angels' wings. And... Uh, I pray that you heal and protect us all and 
that you guide us and that you open our senses to you and help us to receive visions and dreams of you and that you help us to um, that you help us to have pure faith in you and trust and that you help us all to become more kind and compassionate and loving and that you instill your inner peace in all of us. Thank you. Is there anything else you want us to pray for you about? Say that. Jesus has cured me of many spiritual afflictions, and I was in a wheelchair once for um, for three for uh, three years, and He healed me. And I just want to say hallelujah and thank you for His healing miracles. Amen. Amen. So, come on over here. Frey Lemmet's fairly new to our church. She uh, and she's very open with her with her struggles and everything. And God has done. Uh, if you if you if you know Frey Lemon and you've met her, um, from the time that that she started coming to Meeting House until now, uh, I just want to say God's made a visible difference in in her. Uh, she's he's his grace has has been at work you. Uh, within yeah. you. Um, yeah, he's I don't want to. Yeah. Right. I know Frey Lemmett's a, a very forthright, straightforward person, so uh, I'm not afraid to, to say some things because I know she won't take uh, offense at it. But she, she was, she, God's just really changed, changing her personality, her, her, her countenance, which she's done with, with other people here. Uh, so let's pray for her. Uh, she's had some, some, a lot of, non-christian spiritual experience okay and uh as she said she has uh she deals with the eating disorder so let's pray for freedom for her okay let's pray father god we we lift Frey lemon up to you and we and we praise you because you are almighty god and you do heal uh, and we thank you that we've seen you uh heal uh, people in our church set them free from uh, demonic influence and from from you, you've healed people's eyes and backs and hips and uh, we just praise you for that and so we lift up Frey Lemmet to you God and and we ask you God to give her one mind to bind up her heart and her mind and give her peace uh, that you would uh, set her free from uh, any non-Christian spiritual influence, any any demonic influence that that uh, that that still uh, resides, that still nags, that's still around. We ask for repentance, God, for her from from all of these things. We ask you in Jesus' name uh, for freedom that you set her free in Jesus' name uh, from these uh the eating disorder that she that she deals with uh and you there's freedom in you lord you said if you that uh with you there's freedom if you if you know my truth and and uh you remain in it then uh the truth will set us free so we we just ask for remaining in your truth for Frey limit uh, we ask for the work of your spirit in her and over her to set her free in Jesus' name, and we thank you for it. Amen. Yep. We love you. Any Anybody else have a prayer for the church? Uh, leading you, put on your heart to pray for Meeting House Church. So just so you know, I told you it doesn't matter. This is all unscripted. We had a long order of service today, and none of this was on it. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know if you're on there. Check the green light. I was praying earlier, and uh, the scripture came to me. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church and pray over them, 
and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offer in faith will make a sick person well, and the Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. And the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Um, what's it going to take? What's it going to take for us to wake up? I was, I was talking to someone this weekend, and um, see, we suffer, and we don't say anything. We suffer, we suffer. And, you know, we might have somebody pray, and, and nothing happens, but you just continue on with life. This person that I was talking to had back pain for a long time. And I'm like, well, why didn't you say anything? Well, they just didn't say anything, so uh, we prayed, and she's healed. No more back pain. Um, so if you're sick, if you're not feeling well, high blood pressure, diabetes, whatever it may be, I mean, let's pray. We have prayer meeting on Monday. Let's pray. What's it going to take for us to wake up? I mean, if you're dealing with any Ill illnesses, what does it say? Come, let's pray for you. I believe in miracle signs and wonders. I, I, I believe that God wants to show himself in a powerful way. But what's it going to take? I do have a prayer that I'm going to pray. But like James was talking about in Malachi, I've read over that hundreds of times. I preached on that. And I, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. People don't like to hear that. But here's the thing. What's it going to take? What they did is they went before the Lord lightly. They went before the Lord lightly. They took it. Well, you know, here, here's my garbage. Whatever you want. Here you go. And that's not what God wants. He wants our best. He wants us to love him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. So that means when we come together, when we're praying, we're not texting on the phone. We're not searching on the phone. We're, we're not goofing off. We're not talking. We are focusing on the Lord. That's what we're supposed to be doing right now, right now is doing that. Focusing on the Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love the Lord with all that you have. All your focus should be on the Lord right now. Nothing else. Oh, what am I having for dinner? Oh, what time is the Patriots game? Who cares about all that? The only thing that matters right now while you're in here is your relationship with the Lord. What's it going to take for us to wake up? He's all that matters. He's all that matters. Nothing else matters. It's your relationship with the Lord. I'm going to pray. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. So worthy of praise, honor, and glory. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. You are holy. You are awesome. You are loving. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you that you've taken the blinders off our eyes, that we've been able to see the truth. Oh, Lord, forgive us that we don't do more for your work, for your kingdom, Lord. Forgive us. Lord, I pray right now that repentance would come in this house right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, you are mighty, you are awesome. Forgive us, Father. It's time to wake up. <sighs> Father, I pray for each person in this place that there would be an increased hunger for you to pray and to seek your face in a greater way. Draw near to you and you will draw near to us. Pray for a greater hunger to read your word, to study, to get your word inside of us. Lord, I pray that there would be a greater sense of reverence and awe of who you are in this house. Lord, I shout out to you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Touch the hearts of each person in this house today, Lord. Convict them. Father, I pray if there's any that are sick that would step forward, that they may be healed today. You just, uh, Lord, we love you and thank you. 
I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Band, why don't you guys make your way back up to the stage? And we'll sing a few more songs. We'll probably change things a little bit. Uh, the ushers during this song set are going to redistribute the prayer cards. Did you guys take those up uh, first go around? So they're going to pass the plates, and you just grab a prayer card out of the plate. Okay, and during this, during this uh, song set, uh, worship set, um, just pray for the card that you get. Pray while we're worshiping, okay? And then we're going to go from after this right into the Lord's Supper, and we'll be, and we'll be finished, okay? All right.
boy, don't, don't we have just a wonderful, wonderful God? I mean, imagine God himself sent his son to become one of us, to become one of us, to live the life that we live. Just like it, he went through everything you go through except for sin, right? Praise God that he didn't, right? He kept himself holy and pure so that he could be empty of sin, so that on the cross he could become full of our sin. God did this for you. Jesus is your champion. He put you on his back and carried you up the mountain of God because you can't get there on your own. I can't. Sent from God, the pioneer of our salvation. He went where no one else could go, into the presence of God, and offered his his blood in sacrifice for our sins to win us entry into God's presence, into God's life. Man, you have a God that loves you. Loves you so much, he sacrifices one and only son. He loves you so much that he sent his Holy Spirit to be in you, to be with you, to be on you. He's wiped away, that's biblical language, every sin of yours, past, present, and future. Jesus died, we read it over and over again, once for all, once for all. On the night before he was betrayed, he ate the last supper with his, with his disciples. And uh, he took, uh, during, the, during the supper, he took bread and uh, these open, I'm sorry to have to break right there and explain this, they open in two layers. The first one is the transparent layer that you see through it, and the second one is the aluminum layer. On the night before he was betrayed, he, he ate his last meal uh, we call it the Last Supper, with his disciples. And during the meal, he took the bread, and he said, this is my body. It's going to be broken for you. And he said, take each one of you and, and eat it. And after the supper, he took the cup, and he said, this is, this, is the, this is my blood, the cup of the new covenant, the new relationship that God is offering to, to mankind, to anyone who will believe in his son. God says that relationship is this. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers when I brought them out of Egypt and took them by the hand because they were... Because they did not obey that covenant. He said, the covenant I will make with them at that time will be this. I will write my laws on their minds and in their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will a man say to his neighbor or to his brother, know the Lord, because they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest. And I will forgive their sins, and I will remember their transgressions no more. That's the new covenant relationship that you, that God has given you with himself through his son, Jesus Christ. And then he said, take all of you and drink. This is the cup of of the new covenant, my blood. Let's pray and band come back up and lead us out and worship. Father God, we praise you. You are so, you are good beyond words. God, we bless you. We praise you. You forgive all of our sins. You heal all of our diseases. You redeem our lives from the pit and you crown us with your love and compassion. You satisfy our desires with good things so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. God, you do not treat us as our sins deserve or reward us according to our iniquities, but as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is your love for those who fear you. As far as the east is from the west, so far have you separated us 
from our transgressions. God, we praise you. You are king and we will give you glory. You deserve it all. You are worthy of all honor and praise and power and, and wealth. Everything, God, that we could gather together of great value and put at your feet as a gift, you are worthy of it and more. God, we praise you and thank you in Jesus' name.
workmanship. We are his church. God is good, amen? amen. No, I mean it. I don't, I'm not saying that because we're in church and it's a Christian thing to say. God is good, amen? amen? We didn't pray for the cards, so as we are dismissed, I'm going to have you take those with you. Pray for them throughout the week as you think of them. Have a great week. We'll see you guys next Sunday.